Right, so we're starting <coughs> to assemble or continuing to assemble the primary chain case now. We've got the oil pump in uh, fine, and I replaced that um, that screw, the, the wrong screw that was in there that was too short. And there should be a photo coming up of the, the screw, which you can see it's slightly longer than the original screw, and that goes in. The, uh, the 11 o'clock position because obviously there's that dowel on the end so it just needs that bit of extra thread that extra length uh, to go in right uh, and then we fitted I fitted the pinion on the, uh, the oil pump drive pinion on the crankshaft it slots in and then the intermediate which again, and that just slots on that shaft and that's all pump done. And now we're going to fit this rather strange bit of rubber tubing. Uh, and this is some sort of like auxiliary uh, oil feed for the primary chain. So we're going to put this little uh, gizmo in. And it's just a little rubber tube and it goes up through there. And what it is, the idea is quite simple. But there's like a catch area there the oil's flung around by the chain it flings it up into there and it then funnels down through this little tube and this little tube sits over the top of the primary chain and so this then drips more oil down onto the chain this was missing on our bike uh, our engine when uh, before we fitted it so I, I decided to fit one to be honest it's probably not that sort of necessary because um, they deleted it on the T160s. I, th I think they mainly deleted it because they couldn't really get it in, but you know, then they thought, well, I'll just, just leave it out because it's, it's easier. <laughs> um, but it, it, it's supposed to be there, so I'll put it back in. So it's this little rubber tube, and then we've got um, this little gasket. Now this gasket is there, it's actually got three holes. That, that hole is to hold this pipe on. And the other two holes are where the outer chain case bolts in. And there are two holes in the middle of the chain case that go into there. And this, this gasket is for those two holes because what can happen is oil being sneaky can actually come down through the bolts in the chain case and then dribble down the outside of the chain case. So it's not to stop oil going in anywhere. Uh, it's to stop it coming out and it isn't actually needed on on there because that's just a blind hole um, that doesn't go anywhere but the only reason but because like that holes in the way of the gasket they just made the gasket so it uh, it goes over all three holes otherwise it would be too awkward having said that the first engine ever rebuilt someone had put too long a bolt in there the bolt had obviously replaced it with the wrong bolt and they'd actually broken through the back which goes into the clutch so actually i did need a gasket because oil was sneaking down that thread and going into the clutch but normally you don't so this gasket i've put some well seal on those two uh, bits there okay and then we just push the tube up uh, into this sort of catch bit and then over there uh, I'll put a bit of, uh, I'm going to put a bit of uh, thread lock on the uh, thread. There we go. Uh, there's a little bracket there that holds the tube in place. And there we go, that goes in there. and uh, we can fine tune it later on so uh, I'm just putting that in there now uh, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tighten that up I'm not going to over tighten it we've got a lock tab if we need it and I might well use it although we've got the well seal on uh, we've got the lock tight on the thread um, but 
what happens is if you're not careful you tighten this it starts spinning the gasket and then then you try and straighten the gasket and uh, it all rips and it's a bit of a mess so yeah i think i will if i can do so without uh, creating too much mess i'll see if i can bend that tab up without damaging the gasket i think i'll just bend that tab up without damaging the gasket now i don't know how well you can see from here but i've just ripped the corner off the gasket the very you know, the whole bit of this gasket i could rip the middle it wouldn't matter the bit that matters are the two ends and i've ripped the half off one end luckily i've got lots of spare gaskets so uh, i think we better start again with that one and there we go i've uh, i finally fitted it um of course it turns out i didn't have a spare gasket but i've got some gasket paper so i just made uh, just made one which isn't pretty uh but it will do its uh, it'll do its job right uh, so we're about ready to put the primary chain on so we've got the uh, engine sprocket nut uh, and it's got the engine sprocket <laughs> Uh, the lock tab and the nut and then it's got two spaces behind it those spaces were put on at the factory to align the primary chain we've got a brand new primary chain um, Regina and I'm just a bit surprised because it's got a um, split pin in it now I've never had a primary chain that's got a split link uh, before but uh, obviously it must be okay um because normally this comes one piece but uh it's got a split link then we have the the um shock absorber <coughs> with the new rubbers in it and the radial bearing on the uh, outside and we've got the thrust washer on the inside and then we've got the nut the, there's a spacer that goes on first and then the nut that holds the shock absorber on inside the nut there is uh, there goes an oil seal because what happens is this nut goes on over the pull rod and if there wasn't an oil seal then oil would go down um, you know through the shaft follow the pull rod and get down into the clutch where we don't want it so there's an oil seal the thing about this oil seal is that when you put it in it kind of counterintuitive you, you naturally want to put it in that way round okay that's the sort of oh, can't get any light on it why can't i get the light to work properly there we go uh, you naturally want to put it in that way around but it goes in that way around okay because we have the uh, we always have the open side towards the oil and of course what's happening is it'll all be this will all be full of oil and then we want to stop it going down there's a nut there so the oil still faces outwards to stop the oil going down the shaft um, going down the clutch shaft and into the clutch so it is counterintuitive slightly but that oil seal always fits outwards um, <clears throat> now coming back to these so the thing with the primary chain is that it's difficult to align it because the clutch floats right we've got the clutch on the clutch hub in there but it floats now when we put the um, shock absorber on and tighten it up all we're going to do is tighten it up to the shaft so then the whole shock absorber will float it's only when we put the outer primary chain case on and that will sit against the uh it will sit against this radial bearing and then that will stop it from moving but exactly where on this uh, shaft you know it could be fully in or it could be fully out which is about sort of you know 80 thou um, so depending there it depends on how straight the primary chain is so what you what they do at the factory there's ways of measuring it with a special tool to make sure uh it's straight and you make make it straight by adding or removing spacers from behind the engine sprocket and that straightens the primary chain now we can if we needed to if i didn't think it was already done then I could remeasure it and I'm not going to do that because I'm pretty sure it's okay. However, if you do want to know how to do that, it's all a question of measuring it to this edge here, basically. 
Uh, there's another video on the T160 engine I did recently. <clears throat> and I think that's um, the T160 engine rebuild part 39, I think it is. And that will tell you how to uh, go through uh, measuring to make sure the, to see if you need any spaces behind this engine's pocket to straighten the primary chain. Um, what else? Something else I was just going to mention. Oh, yes. And just by the by, for some reason, so not to confuse people, the um, the shock absorber is fitted different ways round in the between the T150 and the T160. So on a T160, uh, this plate faces inwards, and on a T150, this side faces outwards. Okay, just um, because someone asked me why things were upside down a while back, and it's not upside down. It's because for some reason they changed the orientation of the shock absorber T150 to T160. Okay, so I'm going to fit the uh, oil seal in there and uh, then we should just be ready to slide uh, everything on. Right, we're putting the uh, primary chain on. So the two spacers that were already there, they go on behind the engine sprocket. We fit the engine sprocket in the primary chain. It's got a split link. We make sure the split link is going facing the right way. So the head always goes in direction of travel, which in our case is anti-clockwise. Then I'm fitting the shock absorber into the chain like that. And I'm making sure that the uh, thrust washer hasn't fallen off the back. Then I've put some oil on this nose, as it's called, because that nose is going to go in there and the outside of it to begin with runs on this rate on this needle roller bearing and then there's an oil seal so it goes into the bearing and then into the oil seal so again i need oil uh, for both uh, for start up and so then all i need to do is line up both sets of splines to get this chain to slide on It's on at the back and uh, it's on the front. It's a bit tight at the front. Oh yes, uh, we're renewing the primary chain by the way. Uh, because it was just the, the other one was just worn out. It was very uh, uh, very slack even though the adjustment was on high. That seems pretty tight but I think we're okay. And there we've got the horseshoe, so it goes uh, anti-clockwise in the direction of the engine. Okay, so that's roughly fitted. Then we've got the locking tab, and the sort of the ear, the tang, which isn't bent up properly on this one. That fits uh, in uh, one of the splines there. There we go. And then there will be a nut. I'm not putting it on yet, I'm just putting it on loosely. There's a nut there, the engine sprocket nut. There we go, it goes on the crankshaft there. We'll put that on properly in a minute. And then we have the nut for the, uh, so for the, uh, Shock absorber, so there's a spacer that goes in first and just sits in there. That's it, pull the clutch shaft out to its maximum position. And then we're going to put this nut on. And then we are going to tighten uh, them both up and torque them down using our special tool that we'll talk about shortly. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some uh, lock a lock thread on both threads and then I'm going to put some tape around the uh, pull rod because I'm going to push this uh, nut on over the pull rod but the problem is that it's a threaded rod and it may damage the oil seal in pushing it on so I'm just going to put a little bit of tape over that thread so that I can push it on because this seal goes on beyond the thread so when it's on beyond the thread, then I can take the tape off. Okay, it's just, um, 
it shouldn't damage because we're pushing it like with the seal, with the lip of the seal, if you know what I mean. If we, when we take it, if we ever took it off, then we would really damage it by pulling it off uh, because we're pulling it like against the lip of the seal and it would probably damage it on the threads. But I'm going to put some tape on anyway, just to be on the safe side. And we're going to put some thread lock on both threads. Okay, so I've put thread lock on both. It's especially important to put thread lock on this one because there's no lock tab. Okay, on this one. And, and it's done up the tightest of any nut on the engine, this uh, shock absorber nut. Right, so I put some tape over the thread so I can now, hopefully, I'm going to put some oil on actually, or I forget. I did forget. So then I'm just going to uh, yeah, slide this on over the thread, over the tape that I've got on. And just start engaging it with the shock absorber, with the clutch shaft. There. And it's on. And it's just past the thread. So you can get this off the tape off now, which of course will be inverted possible to come off. There we go, tape's off. And the nut is just finger tight. And then the engine sprocket nut, which I shall just uh, put on. Again, finger tight. Then we have a, um, a special socket to do up this shock absorber nut. It's a 15 16 size. But the main thing is it's extra deep because it has to go over the clutch pull rod. Okay. And uh, let's do it a bit more by hand. There we go. And then hopefully I will use my special locking tool and this is um, provided by Andy Priest, um, uh, another triple enthusiast and I think he sells them on eBay uh, so it's a um, Triumph Trident uh, uh, primary chain locking tool and you can get them for the T150 and Rocket 3 that's one style that's this one and then there's another style for the T160 because that has a different primary chain, it has a duplex chain. This is triplex three, the triplex three, uh, three rows. T160 has a duplex two row chain as standard. And so I hope I do this because of course I fitted the uh, oil feed. This, uh, and uh, it's a bit in the way, <laughs> but I think it's okay. So what we have to do is, let's have a look. We fit it in between the, uh, the teeth of the uh, uh, the two sprockets, and that, and when it's in, that will lock. I'm looking for my uh, there we go. Uh, that will lock the uh, primary chain. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting that on because I'm going to tighten it until it starts turning the engine. Oops, someone's not happy outside. Mm -hmm. Right, because I need to get the teeth lined up. If you if the teeth aren't lined up, this won't go in. And it is a bit fiddly, but that should there yeah, that should go in. There. There. So that locking tool, clever idea, huh? That fits between the two sprockets. So they're now completely lock solid, so I can now tighten them up. Because this one does up to uh, 60 foot pounds. I'll just check that. And this one does up to 80. I'm just going to double check that. 60 and 80, yeah. Now, traditionally what you do is you put some rag or some wood or something in the primary chain to try and lock it on the sprocket but you know it's always bouncy 
it's never works. And if you're not careful, you end up with the, the rag or the wood going round the sprocket, you know, nightmare. So one of these, I was 30, 40 pounds, something like that, but worth their weight in gold. Andy Priest, um, primary chain lock and tool for trade. Okay. Oh, no, I've got a phone call. Uh, it's my elderly neighbour. I'll have to get it. I'll see you later on. Right, elderly neighbour sorted. So let's have a go at tightening these up. So this one's going up to 60. And look at that. You see, it locks it locks that primary solid. There's no bounce or anything like if you use a rag or a piece of wood. It's absolutely rock solid. And there we go. We're up to 60, just like that. I'm going to turn the uh, torque wrench up now to 80. It's between 75 and 80. But, you know, I tend to go up to just about 80. Oops. Change the socket. Get this long, deep socket on. There we go. And we're going to do this up to uh, 80. I mean, that is tight, isn't it? There we go. Give it another check. Yeah. Whew. Done. Sorted. So, primary chain in. I don't know if I can get that. Oh, yeah, just, just, just slipping out that now. That's nice. Are you slipping out? Yeah. There we go. And uh, there we go. Primary chain all in. They're all tightened up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've just got to turn the tab over on the lock tab over on the engine sprocket nut, uh, and that's it. And then uh, we can get the uh, uh, we can get the outer cover on, and uh, we just we're we're just about we're kind of almost just about there on the engine. Fantastic. So yeah, pleased with that. We'll uh, I'll just check everything, and then we'll get the outer cover on.